The year is 1814 in Hartford, Connecticut. Alice Cogswell is playing outside. Alice is a nine-year-old girl who is deaf. She lost her hearing at the age of two due to spotted fever and later lost her speech. Although there were other children, she was playing in the dirt alone. Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, Alice's neighbor, was watching her out a window from his family's house nearby. He noticed she was playing all alone and wanted to do something. Gallaudet, not knowing sign language, wanted to communicate with Alice. He pointed to his hat and wrote H-A-T in the dirt. Alice understood him and Gallaudet wanted to teach her more. As he got to know Alice and her father, he realized Alice was intelligent despite the fact that she could not hear, speak, or have the same learning opportunities as other kids. Alice Cogswell made history at nine by inspiring Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet to create a school for the deaf. This moment created a movement for the entire deaf community. Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, founding for the American School for the Deaf in 1817, produced turning points for the hearing impaired community by giving the deaf the opportunity to learn, teach, communicate, and connect with each other using American Sign Language. This first introduction has made a difference not only to Alice Cogswell, but also kids like her for the last 200 years. Gallaudet was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1787. He moved to Hartford, Connecticut with his family, and at the age of 14, he got accepted into Yale College. At Yale, he wanted to pursue ministry until he met Mason and Alice Cogswell. Dr. Mason Cogswell lived in Hartford, Connecticut with his daughter, Alice Cogswell. Mason Cogswell was unhappy that his daughter couldn't get proper education and was worried about her future. Cogswell found out that in Europe and France, they're teaching deaf students some sort of sign. After Mason, Alice, and Gallaudet met, Mason asked Gallaudet to help kids like Alice communicate and asked him to help found a school to do that. Mason said he would cover the funds. Gallaudet agreed to do this after feeling inspired by the day outside with Alice. Gallaudet flew to Europe to study the teaching methods and signs. When he reached Europe, Gallaudet tried to learn the Braidwoods method used in London. He had no access to learning the teaching method and made his way over to France. As he arrived, Gallaudet met Laurent Clare, who was a deaf Frenchman who taught the Royal Institution for the Deaf. Laurent Clare lost his hearing and smell at the age of one when he fell into a fireplace. Clare and Gallaudet bonded as Clare was able to teach him French Sign Language. He even kept a diary of some of their conversations when Gallaudet was teaching him how to write in English. I presented my blotted paper to him with the same fearfulness which a scholar feels when he shows his lesson to his master. In correcting my English, Mr. Gallaudet told me that I began to make fewer faults informally, and that if I continued to apply myself faithfully in a short time, I should not make any more. Gallaudet stayed in France for around two years until he had returned back to the U.S. He asked Claire if he would like to travel back with him and help found a school for the deaf. Claire agreed to do this and traveled with Gallaudet to America to help with the school. They arrived back in America in 1816, at a time where society was ready for a turning point in deaf education. At that time, people valued their religion and wanted everyone to be educated about religious beliefs. They also valued literacy and wanted to make sure everyone could understand how to read and write. Many people also cared a lot about philanthropy and wanted to give back and help society for the better. Claire, Gallaudet, and Cogswell were now ready to shape history for deaf education forever. The American School for the Deaf was established in 1817 in the Bennett City Hotel in Hartford, Connecticut. The school became the first recipient of state aid in America when the Connecticut General Assembly awarded its first annual grant to the school in 1819. The U.S. Congress awarded the school a land grant in 1820. It was the first instance of federal aid in elementary and secondary special education, making history again. The mother school, as the school came to be called, drew attention from different states all throughout the U.S. One of the most popular areas was a small island called Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard already had a large population of deaf people. Most of them already had signs that they used to communicate at home, which they brought to the school. The American language used the school was created from French signs, Martha's Vineyard signs, and home signs. Many students who first arrived were known as outcasts and looked as not being intelligent in society. The opening of the school created a turning point and showed the world they were just as smart as other kids. Some of this lack of understanding 
came from the fact that they had little hearing and little communication skills before learning ASL or American Sign Language at the school. In his enthusiasm of the school and the sign language used there, Galdet stated, the heart claims as its perkler and appropriate language that are the eye and countenance of the attitudes, movements, and gestures of the body. Life at the school in the 1800s through the 1900s was designed to help deaf and hard of hearing students learn to communicate in a community. At the school, they are taught two languages, writing in English and ASL. Writing was very important and was a big part of their education. Religion was front and center to their experience in learning. Boys started their morning with chapel. Students were required to learn vocation. Girls had to learn domestic skills like sewing, tailoring, and teaching, while the boys learned coppering, shoemaking, and metalwork and farm work. They studied history, math, and science, and learned to be self-supported so they could eventually live on their own. Lunch was called dinner, and there's different foods for all days of the weeks. For example, on Sunday they would have roast pig, applesauce, steaks, and vegetables, while on Monday they would have soup, cold joint, calf heads, and vegetables. The school's population grew from a couple dozen students in the 1800s to around 200 students in the 1900s. Despite the development of the school, a major challenge was happening in Europe. In 1880, a conference was held in Milan, Italy by deaf educators who only believed in oralism. They decided that oral education was better than sign language. The American School for the Deaf opposed the declaration and continued to use ASL despite the pushback, which later made an impact on the deaf community, keeping ASL alive. A challenge with living in the school was illness and health as a result of epidemics. After World War II, there was a lot of great changes in technology used in the school. Real-time captioning helped learning at the school and in the world. This first school for the deaf inspired over 40 other schools for the hearing impaired community to open up across the U.S. The second school to open up in the U.S. was the New York School for the Deaf. From 1843 to 1912, over 40 schools for the deaf were established by the deaf and hearing teachers from American School for the Deaf at Gallaudet College, including schools in Indiana, Tennessee, North Carolina, Illinois, Georgia, South Carolina, and Arkansas. In 1990, the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, was first signed into law by President George H.W. Bush. This law entitles the deaf and hard of hearing to the same services as anyone else. They may not be segregated, excluded, or denied schooling, showing a continued need for deaf education. Deaf and hard of hearing went from being viewed as a mental illness to people viewing them as experts on their own requirements, believing they should be respected and valued as individuals, creating another turning point in education for the deaf community. Today, approximately 85% of the deaf and hard of hearing children attend mainstream schools, although many still require or opt for schools like the American School for the Deaf. At Gallaudet University, a university named after its founder and that specializes in deaf education, the Deaf Studies program allows students to be at the forefront of research and exploration for the deaf and hard of hearing community. A diverse and well-published faculty ensures students enter their social and cultural climate of the deaf community with confidence and tools to advance the world's understanding of human diversity. Currently at the Mother School, students who use ASL to communicate need to be able to see each other to sign and interact with each other. All tables in the school are round, allowing students and teachers to be able to see everyone. The hallways are wider so students and faculty can walk side by side and see each other. The School for the Deaf Community also started a movement for the deaf rights and accessibility in the broader deaf community. They have people who sign at performances, like speeches and concerts, allowing the hearing impaired community to better experience these events. What happened to Alice? Alice attended the American School for the Deaf and was a very good writer. She was extremely intelligent and had many friends. Although she died young at 25, she stayed connected with the school. After she left, she also did a lot of traveling. The first American School for the Deaf was a turning point for the students and for the world who began to see them as bright and capable. This school changed education for the deaf and positively impacted the world today.